very often we as women have the idea from early on in life that we're going to be a mum. For some people, that's not their, their thing. But for an awful lot of girls, that's what they want to do. They want to be a mum. But what if that option is not available to you? What if you get as far as being pregnant, but you lose the baby again and again and again? So you look at enhanced means of fertility and then you really suffer. Sarah, can you give us some insight, please, into the truth about infertility and miscarriage? Over to you. Every morning, I wake up to the sound of the kookaburras laughing in the gum trees. I feel the sand beneath my toes as I walk along the beach, watching the most beautiful sunsets. And I spend my days empowering women to love themselves, connect with who they really are, and heal. How lucky am I? But it hasn't always been this way. I'm also part of a club that I never wanted to join. I'm a statistic that shatters the lives of so many people every single day. Yet we don't talk about it and we don't know how to support others through it. An estimated 186 million people globally live with infertility and 23 million miscarriages occur every year worldwide. So the chances are that during your lifetime, you'll know someone who will face this. In the past 60 seconds, 44 pregnancies have ended. The reason that I share my story is because I want to support other people to feel less alone and to feel supported. And I'm here today to do that. Let me take you back to 2009. After years of dealing with polycystic ovary syndrome, secondary infertility, and a miscarriage that left me devastated, the doctors told me that my best chance to complete my family lay with IVF. Disillusioned with the poor medical treatment that I'd already received in the UK and the cost of IVF treatment, I began to research clinics in other countries. I settled on Norway and I was really naive. I I believed that once this routine IVF procedure had completed, I would be able to spend the rest of my time with my family enjoying a holiday while we anxiously waited to find out whether I was pregnant. But the IVF cycle went disastrously wrong. After the egg retrieval, I lay in intensive care in the most incredible physical, emotional, mental and spiritual pain. My ovaries had reacted badly to the hormones and my body began to fill up with fluid. My stomach ballooned and I put on about 20 kilograms. My kidneys stopped working and my heart was enlarged. It was just absolutely excruciating. Morphine didn't even touch the surface of the pain that was viciously pumping through my body. And the doctors, they couldn't stop my deterioration. They could only treat each symptom as it arose. My lowest moment was watching my three-year-old son walk out of the hospital doors with his grandma to return to the UK. My heart ached and I prayed that we would see each other again. I battled with immense guilt that I had put myself through an elective procedure that could now change the course of my son's life forever. Thankfully, I had learned meditation because it saved my life. Late one night, a consultant came into my room once my body had begun to heal and she sat down on my bed and she put her hand on my leg and she looked deeply into my eyes and said, Sarah, you've been very lucky. And she confirmed that I could never go through IVF again because, well, it would kill me. 
my hope to complete my family now lay with the frozen embryos that were patiently waiting in the freezer. After my body had made full recovery, I returned to Norway and went through a frozen embryo transfer and I fell pregnant with twins. I was absolutely overjoyed and I believed that this was the silver lining that I had been desperately seeking for so many years. But a couple of months before I emigrated over to Australia to begin a new life, I lost one of the twins and then the other. Yet again, we were right back at the beginning of our journey to complete our family. And we moved to Australia to begin a new life as a family of three instead of five. As traumatic as my story is, it is not unique. I know so many people who have done the journey tougher for longer and with even less support than me. The biological urge to hold a baby in our arms is just so overwhelming and it drives us to stay on the craziest of emotional, physical and financial roller coasters that you can imagine, but with no guarantee at the end. Sadly, not everyone gets there happily ever after. But what does make all the difference for anyone on this journey is knowing that they're supported by their loved ones. And I want to share with you now three ways that you can support someone who's going through infertility or miscarriage. Number one, grief. Grief is a big part of the journey and we can support other people through their grief. Often we don't know what to say to someone and that's okay. But providing a safe space for them to fall is really, really important. If you don't know what to say to someone, try. I'm sorry for your loss and I'm here for you. When we can hold space for someone's grief with patience and compassion, it makes such a difference to that journey. When a mother elephant loses her baby, all the other elephants, they stand around her in a circle and they provide all the space and time for her to heal and to grieve and mourn. It really is such a beautiful thing that we can do for each other. Number two, routine chores. If you've just had a miscarriage or you've received bad news or you've come out of hospital, performing household chores can be the very last thing that you feel like doing. So offering to pick up groceries, do laundry or make a meal for someone can make all the difference. And number three, social gatherings. Attending social gatherings can be really difficult for someone if they are struggling to conceive or they have had a miscarriage, particularly if children are the focus of the celebration or they're in attendance at the event. So give your loved ones the, the space and the compassion to make a decision for themselves as to whether they feel up to and able to be able to go to those events. I told you earlier that not every story has a happy ending, but I didn't share with you what transpired for me in Australia. Infertility and miscarriage took me on this crazy journey to self-love and acceptance. And for that, I'm really grateful. I surrender to life and I embrace nature and I learned that our mind, body and spirit are all connected. And when these are balanced, we're in a much better place to be able to welcome a baby into the world. Within six weeks of arriving in Australia, despite having no jobs, knowing no one and nowhere to live, I fell pregnant with my daughter, who is now 12, and four years later, I gave birth to another little girl. I have such gratitude for all my children, all three of them. They have become my biggest blessings and my greatest teachers. Writing my book, Infertility Saved My Life, was birthed out of a desire to break the silent stigma and shame surrounding infertility and miscarriage and infant loss. Part one contains my memoir, and part two all the tools, techniques, insight and wisdom that I learned along the way. And there's also sections for anyone wanting to support someone through infertility or miscarriage. I have such gratitude that I was given a second chance at life and to be able to raise my son. He is now almost 17 and he still remembers the moment that he walked out of those hospital doors holding his grandma's hand 13 and a half years ago looking back at me 
and we were both wondering whether we'd see each other again. I believe that when we share our stories, we heal our pain and we provide hope and inspiration for others to do the same. Thank you for listening.